Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Guys, welcome back here to Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Prince Dykes, the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys live all the way from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado. But as always, you know, we're here live in Think Tech Hawaii, um, here in the beautiful state of Honolulu, Hawaii. Great Friday, right? But as always, don't forget to check out the description box. Hit that like, subscribe, comment, share button, bell icon, drop some comments, all of the good stuff. Tell your friends, tell everybody, right? But as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So today we have a very, very special episode. We have a special guest calling in all the way from the beautiful state of Australia, Miss Canna Campbell. She is the host of the YouTube channel Sugar Mama TV that just recently crushed over 100,000 subscribers. Financial planning at its best, right? So... But as you guys can see in the description box, we got a very, in the title of this episode, we're going to be talking about a very important episode, Five Ways to Pay Off Debt. We all know somebody, if not ourselves, struggling with debt, right? Credit card debt, student loans, mortgages, car notes, whatever the case may be, right? We all struggle with some debt. Even America struggles with debt. That's why we have a trade deficit for so long, buying more than we sell. But anyway, we're going to talk about what are some ways we can get out of debt and to start investing with Ms. Uh, Canna Campbell. But without further ado, let me go ahead and introduce her. Ms. Canna Campbell, how are you doing today? I'm well. How are you? I am doing great. I'm doing awesome. And if I, just in case, I, I know I've missed some things. I know that you're an author besides, you know, Sugar Mama TV, that people can follow you all over the place. But can you please tell the audience out there who are listening live and who's getting playback a little bit about yourself? Okay, so I'm actually a financial planner. Um, I run my own business. I've been a financial planner for something like, I think, 15 years or 16 years. Um, I'm really passionate about helping people get on top of their finances because I think when mm -hmm. you when your finances are out of whack, it, it falls into, it impacts your career, it impacts your relationship, it impacts your, your physical um, and mental health. So I launched Sugar mm. Mama TV about three and a half years ago, and it's free. It's a month. People watch it around the world, and I give people um, bite-sized videos as to how to understand their finances, it's like how to become friends with your finances, so how to get out of debt, how to build up savings, how to start investing. Um, I'm really passionate about stocks, um, building up passive income streams, setting yourself up for like a realistically comfortable financial life where you can get the most out of life and, and have that freedom to spend the time as you wish. And, my videos are really fun. Um, I'm really, as I said, I'm really passionate. I share with the audience a lot about my life, my son, my dogs, living in Sydney, Australia. Like, so you really get to see inside my world. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Great YouTube channel, by the way. So definitely make sure you check out her YouTube channel, uh, Sugar Mama TV, which is very big. You know, in the financial world, in the financial industry, you don't see a lot of people just like, hey, I'm going to go home today, crack open a beer, and just watch some finances or whatnot, right? But, yeah. Or like you said, <laughs> right? But like you said, you <laughs> spoke about how it affects your mental health, how it affects your uh, ability not only to grow to financial freedom or to grow your money, but also affects your mental health by having this debt and owing people clog your vision and doing anything. So my first question to you is, Give me a step, one step. What's step one to getting rid of my debt? All right, so first of all, I recommend you write down exactly who you owe money to and how much, okay? So at least you understand where you stand financially. What are your responsibilities? But make sure that list is from the smallest debt to the biggest debt. So this isn't the mm -hmm. most best, like financially perfect way of doing it, but my, my formula for getting out of debt 
is um, is a method to my madness, and that is the feeling of progress. Because when you feel like you, you're paying off debt by starting with a small step first, which is the easiest one, um, it makes you feel mm-hmm. like you're on top. You're getting back on top of your finances. So it's like juggling balls. If you've got, say, you own five different people money, you've got five different credit cards that are, you know, mounting up in debt. If we remove one of those credit cards or one of those balls that you're trying to juggle, it's going to be that much easier. And the fastest way to get one of those debts out of the way is by targeting the smallest debt first. So it makes mm. you more interest, but you'll be more efficient. And you'll, because you're seeing that you're making progress, you'll be more motivated to keep going. You'll have more faith. You'll see that light at the end of the tunnel. So you write it down and then you start focusing on paying off that person at the top of the list first. And you see, you do all these extra things to get out of debt. So you start selling things, you get a side hustle, you get an extra job, you do market research. There are so many different things you can do. Okay. So, like you said, the first step is create a list of who you owe. Is that correct? That's correct. Like, that is quarantine. You know exactly where you stand. None of this, like, thinking about people who you owe in your head. It must be written on paper because that's the first step in helping it get down. Because, you know, from this point forward, that's the line in your sand. Your debt levels are coming down. Got it. Okay. So, first, get your debt. First, make a list of who you owe. Then to say, how much do you owe every person? And once you have that, start with the smallest one first, right? Now, to people, we always say to the person that says, well, the the reason I have this debt is I just don't have enough money. What do you have to say to that person? All right. That is absolutely fine. We can all get into those situations. So the solution is let's make more money. Let's find more money. Let's hustle some extra money. So we need to put ourselves out there and look at the the solution now. What can we do to bring in some extra money? What can we sell? What can what extra work can we take on? Um, you know what um, what surveys can we do online? Like what are the things what, that we what talents or skills can we sell through a task or becoming an Uber driver? Start looking at the solutions rather than just focusing on the problem. And every time you earn okay. extra money, say you set, like say you have a garage sale, or say you sell something on eBay, you put that money straight towards the first person on that list. Okay. And okay, so now you say the person, if you have then you owe debt, it's no if ands and buts around it. You got to find ways to make more money. Yes, that's right. That's the one of the solutions that's going to help so much in getting out of debt so much sooner. You obviously need to do a budget as well so that goes without saying. But this is a way of getting you out of debt faster. Okay. All right. So, oh, that's a, a, a big one that you said, creating a budget. Because so many people, sometimes you just get used to swiping the car, paying it off, swiping the car, and you kind of, yeah, I want to pay it off, but you don't have a plan. So one of the things I always say is, First, you must sit down, create a budget to find out what's coming in and what's going out. Okay, this is what am I? This is what I'm making, right? This is what am I making? This is what I might spend it on, and then you combine that with your list. That could work some magic. Now, um, if we had to list these out in steps, right? So you said step one, create a list, see who you owe, right? Step two, yep. um, write down how much you owe everybody, right? Yeah. Then number three, Correct. find ways to uh, find ways to make more money, whether it's like you said, uh, selling things, looking for a second job, all of the good stuff like that. And step four, create a budget. Correct. Correct. Yes. Yes. Now, what would be so this what will stop you from getting back into credit card debt again? You want to make sure that you've got spending mm. boundaries. Like a budget's not to stop you from spending money, it's just to give you a boundary. So you go, okay, well, I've got $200 a month to spend on clothes. I've got $100 a month to spend on my gym membership. It gives you spending boundaries so that you know you can't go over a certain limit because that will get you back into trouble. Okay, okay. Now, and that helps you, like you said. Now, what do you got to say to the person out there that says, hey, I owe debt, but I have been watching the show. I've been watching you. I want to get into investing. Should that person invest 
or pay off debt? Uh, they need to pay off debt first, absolutely. Um, it doesn't make financial sense when you're paying, say, 20% interest on your credit card, but you're earning, say, 7 or 8% on your stocks. You've got to clear the decks first. I always say building financial security is like building a house. You want to build it on a rock-solid foundation so that if a storm comes by or there's a fire or you know, so there's a, a tornado, your house remains like firmly intact. Sure, there might be a little bit of damage, but it's still standing strong and it's quickly and easily fixed. So exactly the same principles with building your wealth. You must clear that non-deductible toxic debt first. You must build up some emergency savings. And then you can start building um, your investment portfolio. Okay. So you're saying first, don't worry about investing. Don't put anything into a 401k. Don't get a mutual fund, a CD, or anything. Clear the debt first, then build up a savings. Then once you have a savings, then you start to evaluate looking into investing. Am I correct on that? That absolutely, yep. Yeah. And also, it's you'll be so much easier because you'll be able to put all your energy in building your wealth rather than it being spread and thinking, oh, I've got to pay this person off and I've got to put money over here. It's trying to juggle too much. You want to make it really easy and simple so that you can do it and you want to do it and it feels great. Oh, yeah, you, I do. You say, hey, get rid of that, that uh, the leak in the boat first. Get rid of the leak in the boat first. Once you get the leak sealed, then worry about putting water into the boat and watch. Now, I don't. I, I'm just. I don't want. I know you don't want water in your boat, but a bucket. You know, instead of trying to put water into a bucket with a leaky hole, first seal off the hole, then start to pour water into it so it starts to grow. Am I correct? Correct. That's right. And you'll be so much more excited as you see your bucket getting filled up really quickly because you've you've taken the time to fix that hole first. Now, what are some ways I can avoid debt? Because let's say if I follow the steps, the steps you said, said, hey, let's walk back through it. Hey, know what I'm going to do? Um, first, I need to write down all my debt. I need to write down who I owe, what I owe, everything like that. Boom. Now I need to figure out who I, how much I owe to everybody, who I owe and how much I owe. Then you start off with the smallest debt first, then work your way to the biggest debt. If you don't have, a, and then you have to create a budget, then find more ways to make money and things like that. Not to, uh, and the budget is, the goal of the budget is to say, hey, um, it's not telling me what I can't get, it's just giving me red lights, red light, green light, and what can I spend? What, what am I doing too much? And with this, this will avoid me from repeating the same cycle. Now, what are some tricks? Because I know you wrote an awesome book, right? And you, on your channel, you talked about uh, ways that you save $32,000 a year, all of the stuff like that. What are some great tips and ways that, that you know that can avoid me from going into debt again? Okay. Well, having avoiding going into debt, you need to have some cash. So that if anything ever happens, like an emergency, a medical emergency, a family emergency, you've always got cash ready to go. You never rely on a credit card ever again. So the ways we create some emergency money are, one is obviously have a budget, have a set amount each time you get paid, you put like $100 in a separate savings account, it's nicknamed emergency money, is the first way. Then you can look at other ways, so you can look at selling things online, you could look at taking up an extra job over the weekend, um, you could look at doing some online, um, online work, other people have done online surveys, including myself. Um, you can mm. do like dictation, um, they put their skills on Airtasker, they become Uber drivers, um, they, they create these side hustle businesses to help create some extra money that goes into their emergency savings account. And I actually have this video coming up, I interviewed this, this 22 year old girl the other day and she saved $100,000 in three years and um, she did all wow. she got she did all these different things that I recommend, and she. Um, I'm so excited about publishing this video. It will be coming up in two weeks' time. But she's proof that you can really put your mind to it. You have a financial goal, and you're really determined, and you give yourself a budget, um, and you, you look at creating extra money but rather than only trying to save money. It's amazing what you can achieve. And she was only, like I think, about $30,000 a year working in retail, 
um, it's incredible what she's she's done. Wait, hold on. You said someone working in retail, only making thirty thousand dollars a year, managed to save up a hundred thousand dollars in three years. Yep, she did, she she actually did tutoring of kids. Like she's she would um, teach uh, primary school children math and English. So she was doing that when she got home from work. She um, mm. she actually found out that she was buying bedlam and then selling it online on eBay, making a, a profit margin there. Um, she did all these different things, like she sold the clothes. She um, like started to spend less money on clothes and shoes and accessories. Um, but still, like maintained a social life. She did all these amazing things and um, just incredible. Um, what uh, this this girl achieved, and she's the sweetest, incredible girl, and she just realised she was living beyond her means, and um, uh, it's quite an inspiring story. So if you check out my channel, you'll see that coming up shortly. Okay, so wow, so that's great. You know, that's that's a great thing, and that's a great interview that people should check out. I'll definitely check it out myself. Is that how she was able to? Because the first thing people say when they think about investing. I don't make enough money. I don't have enough money. What can I do? You know, I don't have enough money. I don't make enough money. What, you know, how can I uh, possibly get ahead because I don't make enough money? But to sit back and hear someone saying, hey, I had a regular job making $30,000 a year. And what I was able to do was by uh, scaling back on what I was buying and tutoring kids on the side and things like that and putting money back, I was able to, you know, shape my life. Now, Going into, you know, going into the holiday season, you know, I know all the moms out there are building their Christmas list. We're coming into the time of the year where people are going to spend the most money throughout the year. You know, uh, we got Thanksgiving, followed mm. by Christmas, followed by New Year's. What are some tricks and ways and things you got ready for the holidays? What can you tell people for the holidays to be wary of with some good financial advice? Well, you know, I'm actually a single mother as well, and so I'm only sort of starting to prepare for Christmas because, as you said, it's an expensive time of the year. We've got, like, we have school holidays here, um, lots of Christmas programs, we've got lots of, like, barbecues and parties to go to. So one thing um, I've got to do is I, I focus on buying one present a week. So I've already got a few presents on the way, but that just means I don't sort of come December the 15th, I don't, you know, get hit with having to buy everyone's present at the same time. But by buying one present a week, I can do some research online before buying because of shops. Um, I'm also shopping loyally because you get you earn points that you give you further discounts. Um, also, looking at um, it, things like experiences rather than more stuff. I'm a minimalist. Um, I hate clutter. I hate I hate contributing towards um, the landfill. You know, more damage to the environment. So I think I'm getting friends like vouchers to go to a restaurant um, instead of like buying them like a new item of clothing or a new, you know, uh, piece of homeware for their house. Like looking at all sorts of different things. Also um, making sure that coupon codes, um, if there's any special coupon codes or discount codes that you could apply online to get a further discount, even things like free shipping, free gift wrapping, all those little things add up. But I have a budget as to how much I'm willing to spend for each person, and I'm also doing lots of research. If I find, you know, if a person's got a gift, um, a budget around, say, $50, and I find a perfect present that's $40, that's it, I stick to it. I'm not going to feel obliged to then go buy stocking fillers with the remaining $10. You know, I'm, I'm being really strict because I, I do not want to be stressed in January when the New Year starts, I'm going to wake up with no debt. Um, enjoying the new year, feeling motivated and empowered for an amazing 2019. Okay, definitely. Um, there are some great tips that you said. Get free gift. I, I, you know, that's what I'm bad about. I'm not a, a shopper at all. Um, when I want something, I just go get it. I don't look for a sale. I don't look for a bargain. I don't look to see how much it's going to cost. Hey, I want this. I'm, you know, I'm going to go get it or whatever the case may be. But my wife is 10 times better with that because she goes out and shops and uses coupons and find ways to save money where it's with me. I'm just like, okay, I just go get it if I can't figure it out. But planning does save some money and things like that. Now, oh, yeah. you're the author. Definitely. I want to... I want you to tell it, tell everybody about your book. Tell it what it is. Tell us, tell us about uh, your book that you wrote. 
And I know you got another one coming uh, up as well. Called, I do. I do. Really exciting. So my book is called The Thou- One the One Thousand Dollar Project, and it's all about mm-hmm. being more mindful with money. Um, so being aware of how we spend because we we cap, we swipe. We um, wave our phones around a page of things, and we become, become so disconnected with how much money we really spend. And we look at all the stuff in our home, and we're drowning in things. So really, if we could be a bit more proactive with our money, just have a bit more balance, we can actually like create some extra money. And what I did was I applied this myself. I went through my own budget. I found things. I sold things online on eBay. I did market research, um, I worked on the weekends, and I saved over 12 months $32,000. I just focused on half of over $1,000 at a time. So instead of thinking I want to save $32,000, I just thought, I'm going to focus on saving $1,000. That's all. Because that's a really, that's a, a reasonably easy goal to achieve. And then once I've achieved that, once I've saved that one thousand dollars, I'm going to go and invest it in stocks. But I'm not going to worry about the big picture. I'm just going to worry about being in the moment and focusing on that one thousand dollars. And that's all I did at the moment. I got my one thousand dollars. I invested it, and then I moved on to focusing on saving the next one thousand dollars. And so I did it. I was amazed by how much I managed to earn and save. And that was invested into a portfolio of stocks that paid me a passive income. Now, I actually ended up donating that passive income to charity. And I then did round two of the $1,000 project, and I saved over 13 of $36,000. And I did things mm. like I rented my house out on Airbnb. I used frequent food sites to save money on travel and holidays. I did so many different things. I worked the weekends. Um, you know, I had I did I created fun financial challenges like Google February and Manifest in March. And I just did like a zero spend challenge. So all those little things that helped along the way get me to my next one thousand dollars. At the moment, I'm ra- doing okay. round three, and um, I'm hoping to have generated a passive income of seven thousand dollars a year because I always invest my money. Got it, I got it. Okay. The cool thing about so, the $1,000 project mm-hmm. is that you can, you can do the $1,000 project to invest if you want, like I have, but you can also do it mm-hmm. to um, uh, get out of debt. You can do it to pay, I people do it to pay for IVF. I have people who did it to invest in their business. I had so many different things that people did. Now, her link is going to be in the description box to if you want to go check out her book. And what I'm going to do, uh, the first people to comment on um, the first pe- the first two people to comment, you're going to get a copy of her book sent to you, courtesy of the Prince of Investors himself. So that's what you're going to get if you know the first two people to comment and um, to get her book. Now, the other thing I want you to leave people with is to say. Um, how can people follow you? How can people find you? Where do they go? Okay, so anyone can go and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Sugar Mama TV. Um, I've also got my website you can subscribe to for my newsletter. And then, of course, I'm on Instagram. Um, I, I engage with everyone. Um, you can like us on Facebook. You pretty much just Google Canna Campbell or the $1,000 Project or Sugar Mama TV, and you'll see everything that we've, we've I've done um, and sh- how I share everything with everyone. Um, and it's all free, so I'm really easy to find. And also, you can connect to me. You can have a Skype consultation with me. I'm there to help you. Okay. Now, where where where's your your uh, book is available? You can buy my book uh, from uh, the book depository. Amazon is available on Audible. So if you like to listen to your book rather than read, um, it's available there. Um, iBooks as well. Um, all major online book retailers sell it. So, and the great thing about this book is it doesn't matter where you live. It's applicable to everyone around the world. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to, is there anything that you want to leave any of the, uh, the followers out there, the listeners, or people that catch the playback? Is there anything you want to leave them with um, that you want them to take away from you? I want to, yes, I do. Um, everyone should have financial goals in our lives. We have goals on our career. We have goals for our health. We need to have financial goals. Set a meaningful, powerful goal around your finances that makes you feel awake. It excites you. It excites a spark in your life. 
and then get out there and start working towards it. You will feel so much better about yourself and so much more secure about your future when you attend to your personal finances. It's really not that hard. You'd be amazed what you can do when you put your mind to it. But you need a powerful goal. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Well, once again, guys, as always, my name is Prince Dax. I'm the Prince of Investing. Until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else you see me do crazy around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.